powerful symbol of this uh, first Red Scare is the arrest and trial of Sacco and Vanzetti. Uh, this takes place in 1920. And what's gonna, what happens is a, uh, a factory is robbed in Braintree, Massachusetts. And the police at least claim they really don't have any evidence to go on. And so they, they create their list of suspects by rounding up everyone who subscribed to a particular anarchist magazine and then seeing who didn't have alibis. And while Sacco and Vanzetti both have alibis, they're kind of hard to, to validate. And so the police arrest these two men and charge them with this factory robbery where the paymaster was shot and killed. Now, that's obviously not the way most uh, police officers conduct an investigation, and this drew a lot of attention. Uh, and it became a worldwide uh, fiasco, this trial of these two men who simply became suspects because they had different political beliefs. Uh, the judge uh, severely limited the witness testimony and the evidence Sacco and Vanzetti could call. Um, he called them from the bench the anarchist bastards um, during the trial. And uh, the, the trial was something of a joke. Uh, eventually the jury will find them guilty. Uh, the jury foreman will be asked later why he was convinced they were guilty, and he said that he wasn't. He just felt those anarchists uh, uh, should pay for what they believed. This is kind of the height of the first Red Scare and of the paranoia of, of people who believe differently than, than the rest of the country did. Um, on August 23rd of 1927, Sokka and Vanzetti were put to death uh, in the electric chair, and for many people this was a, a terrible blow against uh, uh, freedom. Uh, evidence uh, during the trial actually implicated a, a different group of criminals, um, uh, but the judge refused to allow that evidence to be submitted. And today it's still debated, but it appears that, that a, just a regular run-of-the-mill uh, uh, crime gang committed the crimes. It had nothing to do with politics. On August 26 of 1920, the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote, seemed to be ushering in a new era of progressive uh, reform and, and a society that was moving forward. But it didn't work out that way. The end of World War I brought a struggling economy, labor struggles, race riots, and a fear of radicalism that created a new sense of disillusionment. And Woodrow Wilson, who and the Democratic Party in general, who were convinced that what the country cared most about was the Treaty of Versailles and creating this worldwide progressive utopia, badly miscalculated. The Democrats nominate James Cox of Ohio for president in 1920. He chooses a, a New York politician, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, as his vice presidential candidate. And they run on this idea of this bold, progressive vision of, re, of continuing to reform the, the, not just America, but the entire world. The Republicans run a relative un, unknown, Ohio Senator uh, uh, Warren Harding. He promises Americans a return to normalcy. This is a rejection of reform. Let's go back to the good old days, back before everything got so complicated and messy and everything changed. Turns out this is what America wanted. Harding gets over 60% of the vote, and the Republicans take both the House and the Senate. And we step away from progressive reforms in an active international role uh, in world affairs. 